Let's talk about Boeing. Founded in 1916, this aerospace company is nearly as old as human flight itself. Boeing worked their way into becoming a household name through the 20th century by building a fleet of commercial airliners that move thousands of people all over the world every single day. They've had a hand in pretty much every major NASA operation, including being at the forefront of the Apollo mission to the moon. The legacy of this company stands head and shoulders above all others, and that's left us scratching our heads and wondering just how this former giant has become the lame duck in the new generation of space exploration. This is the space race. So the Boeing Starliner doesn't get talked about very much in the space nerd community, and that's probably because we're all so obsessed with that other space vehicle with the word star in its name, and rightfully so. But the Starliner is back in the news again right now, and it's currently, on the day I'm writing this, making headlines for doing what Starliner does best. Not working properly. My personal fascination with the Boeing Starliner comes from a conversation that I had with a friend not too long ago. He was trying to convince me that Elon Musk is actually an idiot, that SpaceX is overhyped, and that Boeing was doing much more interesting things with their Starliner project. To which I thought, that sounds wrong, but it's worth looking into. And happily, I was right on both accounts. That guy was wrong, and Starliner is actually worth learning about. It may not be a particularly good spaceship, or even a functioning spaceship, but after being so wrapped up in the world of SpaceX, I found it really fascinating to look out the window and check in on what the competition was up to out there. And I hope you'll agree. So the Boeing Starliner is an orbital crew capsule that was built for the purpose of delivering people and supplies to the International Space Station. NASA commissioned the design back in 2014 alongside the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule. NASA wanted both companies to build them new options for getting astronauts to and from space. The United States space program had been forced to hitch rides into orbit with the Russians for the better part of a decade, and it was starting to get a little awkward. With a fancy name like Starliner, you might picture a big, sleek 21st century vehicle like the Starship or the new Glenn, but the Starliner is literally just a capsule. So imagine you're looking at the whole launch vehicle on the pad. Boeing just made the hat. The booster that Starliner is sitting on is the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket in its N22 configuration. The N stands for no fairing, which is the cover that would be used to protect a payload like a satellite. And then there are two solid rocket motors on the sides of the booster and two Centaur engines in the upper stage with the Starliner. So the Atlas V booster is not fully designed by Boeing. They had to partner with Lockheed Martin Space to form the joint venture. ULA, and neither of them actually make the engines that power the whole thing. The main thrust for the Atlas V comes from a Russian-made RD-180 engine that burns kerosene and liquid oxygen. The two strap-on boosters are the AJ-60A made by American company Aerojet Rocketdyne, who also make the upper stage Centaur engines. Those are RL-10s that burn cryogenic liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. As you may have noticed, this thing is like a cornucopia of aerospace technology. No part of the Atlas V is reusable, so it's very expensive to fly, about double the cost of SpaceX's Falcon 9, which has a self-landing and fully reusable first stage. ULA are hoping to upgrade this within the next year to their next generation Vulcan Centaur rocket booster, which is a badass name for yet another underwhelming rocket. The Vulcan Centaur will be powered by Blue Origin's BE-4 liquid methane engine, which is a really nice upgrade over the old Russian kerosene engine. But unlike the Blue Origin New Glenn that the BE-4 was designed to power, the Vulcan Centaur does not have a compelling plan for reusability. They do have a plan, but it's kind of janky, at least in my opinion. Now, I'm not a rocket scientist, but this sounds kind of whack. The idea is that after the first stage does its thing and gets the payload into space, the booster engines, avionics, and thrust structure would be detached as a module from the propellant tanks. That module would then descend through the atmosphere and deploy an inflatable heat shield for protection. Then a parachute deploys to start slowing down the whole mass so that a helicopter can come along and snatch the module from mid-air and bring it back down. ULA calls this their smart reuse system. I call it trying to catch a rocket booster that just fell from space with a helicopter. 
but anyway we're falling off topic here let's get back to the main event so to ensure maximum safety and provide the future human crews with the largest abort window possible starliner takes a very shallow angle on its approach to space this means that following the first stage separation the second stage centaur engines will have to provide an additional burn to reach the desired orbital height and that's where things started to go very wrong for the maiden voyage of the starliner back in 2019. The first orbital test launch of an uncrewed Starliner happened in late 2019. The mission was to reach the ISS, drop off some supplies, and then come back home. Pretty simple. For the first 30 minutes of flight, everything was going perfectly. Lots of rich old men started patting each other on the back and exclaiming that they had made a historic space flight. In reality, the Starliner had somehow picked up the wrong mission lapse time from the Atlas booster before separation, and that led to Starliner's internal clock being off by around 11 hours. It's like if you screw up the AM, PM on your alarm, it's going to go off at night instead of in the morning. And in this case, Starliner's thrusters started firing to stabilize the ship during an orbital burn from the main engines that wasn't actually happening yet. The whole ship was supposed to just be coasting up at the time, so that ended up using a ton of fuel that wasn't budgeted for and NASA had to make the decision that there just wouldn't be enough left to complete the mission. So after floating around aimlessly for a couple days, they brought the Starliner back down. And that brings us to the present day. A full two years later, and the attempted take two for Starliner. Boeing spent a year and a half implementing NASA recommendations and ensuring the spacecraft software works properly with its hardware. NASA even sent their own team to oversee Boeing's work, and they even ran through a full five-day virtual simulation of the mission. The Starliner was scheduled for flight test number two on July 30th, 2021, but uh, that didn't happen. And this was no fault for Boeing. Miles overhead at the International Space Station, a Russian vehicle that was docked with the station unexpectedly started firing maneuvering thrusters. This pushed the whole apparatus into a dangerous tilt that nearly became a horrible disaster. We still don't know why that happened, but understandably it did delay the Starliner mission. It's not unusual for a space launch to be delayed by a few days, so it shouldn't have been a big deal. But on August 3rd, when everything seemed clear for launch, Boeing chose to scrap the mission after countdown had already begun. Apparently, its engineers detected a problem with valves on a propulsion system on the vehicle. They say the valves weren't properly configured for launch. At first, we heard this would only lead to a 24-hour delay and the flight would go ahead on the 4th. But not long after that, Boeing made the decision to postpone the launch indefinitely. So it could be a matter of days, weeks, we don't know. I think it's likely at this point that we'll publish this video before the Starliner flies again. This is all really bad news for Boeing. We started off the video praising them as basically the greatest aerospace company of all time. And rightly so, they are a behemoth of a company. But they've lost their way and they just can't seem to get back on track. The first Starliner flight was supposed to be a comeback show after a failure in the engineering of the 737 MAX aircraft that resulted in two crashes that claimed the lives of hundreds of people. It was a horrible tragedy that really shook public confidence in air travel. Then again, with the test flight number two after the airline industry has been decimated by the pandemic, this Starliner launch was supposed to show the world that Boeing were real players in the new space race. And it's all been a bit of a disaster. Okay, I actually want to end this video on a high note because like I said, I really find the Starliner project fascinating and as underwhelming and flawed as it may be, there actually is some really neat stuff going on under the hood. So. The Starliner may not have racked up nearly as many achievements as the SpaceX Dragon, and the Dragon may have that extremely useful trunk that is bafflingly absent from the Starliner. But there are at least a couple of impressive feats that the Starliner is capable of. Okay, maybe like one and a half, because the first point hasn't been proven in action yet, but in theory, the Starliner will be able to dock itself with the International Space Station, and that is very impressive. If the 2019 launch test hadn't gotten all screwed up, then Starliner would have been the first capsule to dock with the ISS under its own power. Prior to the SpaceX Dragon 2 in 2020, 
all vehicles that reached the ISS had to be grabbed by the Canada arm and berthed to the station. That's the technical term that they use, berthing. So far, only the Dragon 2 can hook up without the help from the arm, but if Starliner ever makes it up there, then it can do it too. They may not be leading the industry in this regard, but at least they're not falling behind either. One thing that Starliner does that Dragon can't is land on solid ground. It was Elon Musk's original plan that the Dragon would actually do a propulsive landing using the abort engines to catch the capsule on its way down and bring them in for a controlled touchdown. But NASA took a look at his plan and basically said, yeah, no, that's a bit too crazy for us. Let's stick with the good old water landing for this one. Starliner is built to land on the ground using a combination of parachutes and airbags no rockets. It's pretty similar to how the Russian Soyuz capsule operates. It also lands on solid ground, but while the Soyuz drops off astronauts in the middle of the desert in Kazakhstan, the Starliner will come back down over the White Sands military base in New Mexico. And that's a huge advantage over water landings. They don't need big expensive boats to recover the vehicle or anything like that, and they don't have to worry about the corrosive effects of salt water getting all over their spaceship. Okay, one more thing because we can't talk about Boeing without shouting out these spacesuits. When people fly SpaceX, we all know that they get to look like proper futuristic astronauts with these clean white suits. But when you fly Starliner, you get to look like an inflatable dollar store version of the Blue Power Ranger, and that's worth the price of admission alone. So, like we said off the top, the Starliner may not be amazing, but it's not nothing either. If Boeing could just get their shit together and put the damn thing into space without making some stupid little mistake, then Starliner would be a perfectly fine spaceship. Boeing are definitely in no position to win the race, but they're at least holding their own for now. Obviously, they don't have the engineering prowess of SpaceX, and they don't even have the ambition of Blue Origin, but at least they got their vehicle into orbit, even if it did still result in mission failure. That's still more than Jeff Bezos or Richard Branson can say. But honest thoughts on the Starliner and the Boeing space program in the comment section below. Let's hear what you guys think. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. We're trying to grow this new channel as fast as we can, and every little bit of support you can give means the world to us. Subscribe for weekly content just like this. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.